Good morning, everybody, and thank you for joining us for our Early Learner Live. My name is Allison, and I'm with Arizona Science Center, and you are joining me outside this morning on a very windy morning to talk about the sun. So thankfully, it's windy, but also really quite sunny. So what do you guys already know about the sun? What is the sun? Is the sun a planet? No, it's not a planet. Does anyone know what it is? It's actually a star and it's our closest star and it's really important to all life on Earth and we're going to be talking about that today a little bit while reading our story, Sun Up, Sun Down by Gail Gibbons. And then we're going to be doing an activity to use the power of the sun to cook a marshmallow. So that's going to be our activity coming up after the story. So the story is Sun Up, Sun Down by Gail Gibbons. The sun wakes me up. It rises in the east and shines through my window. Does anyone else have this problem where the sun shines in their window in the morning and wakes them up? I know I have that problem at my house. It lights up my room and makes patterns on my floors. I observe as I'm looking here, I see some patterns on the floor. What do you think made those patterns? What are those patterns? Could they be shadows? Maybe, I wonder. Its brightness colors the clouds in the sky, but the sun itself is too bright to look at. It could hurt my eyes. Never wanna look at the sun, it is much too bright. That's why it's important to wear sunglasses when we're outside and never stare at the sun. I go down to breakfast. My cereal is made of wheat. My dad tells me the sun made the wheat grow. He says the sun gives power and energy to make plants and trees grow big and tall. Did you guys know that? That the sun is actually why our plants grow. So a lot of the food we eat is because of the power of the sun. It is summer. Because it is hot, I don't need to wear a coat or a sweater today. The sun is high in the sky and the days are long. When the sun is low in the sky, the days are shorter. It is winter and it is cold. That is when I need my coat, hat, and mittens. So if we look at these two pictures, so we see summer and we see winter. What do you guys notice that's similar with these two pictures? Hmm. I see a cat on both pages. I see a girl on both pages. Hmm. I also observe a house. But what do you guys notice that's different, so not the same in the summer and the winter? What differences do you see? Hmm. I see green grass versus white snow. Do you guys see any differences in the sun? Is the sun the same in both of these pictures? I observe that the sun is higher in the summer and lower in the winter. Hmm. What observations did you make? But on a summer morning like this, I see my shadow on the ground. The sun is behind me in the east. When I move, my shadow moves too. By noontime, the sun is shining right above me. My shadow is gone. It is a hot time of the day and I'm glad when my mother calls me inside for lunch. So what happened to her shadow here? What do you notice? Does she have a shadow in this picture? Hmm, I wonder why. While I'm eating, I ask my parents a question. How far away is the sun? My mother tells me it is very far away. 93 million miles from our planet Earth. So 93 million miles, that's a really, really long way. That's so far. She says it is a very big star. It looks bigger than the other stars because it is closest to us. My dad says the sun is a ball of very hot glowing gases and it keeps our planet warm. So the sun is our closest star. He says that Earth would be dark and cold if there was no sun. It would also be empty. Nothing could live on it. Hmm. Do we remember what we said earlier? Helps those plants grow so we're able to have food to eat. The sun does that. So if there's no sun, we'd have no plants. That's not good. Then I couldn't have cereal for breakfast. After lunch, I go outside. My shadow is back again. But now it points east. The sun is moving behind me. Suddenly, big clouds begin to cover the sun. My shadow is gone again. Over the valley, the sun peeks through the clouds, making shadows on the ground. More clouds come. They are gray and black. It becomes dark. 
a raindrop hits my nose and I run home. Mm, so I'm observing these clouds. Did anyone watch the cloud lesson the other morning? Anyone recognize what kinds of clouds these could be? If you were watching the other day, we learned that these are cumulonimbus clouds. If not, you can always check back on our videos. I hear the rain on the roof of my house. My dad says the sun helps make rain, so we have fresh water to drink and that plants and trees can grow. He tells me that when the sun shines on our oceans, lakes, and rivers, it warms the water. Some of that water turns into vapor and rises into the sky. So the sun is really important to us on Earth. The cooler air up in the sky turns the vapor into tiny raindrops. Clouds are formed. The raindrops float higher and higher up into cold air. They become bigger and bigger. Finally, when the drops are heavy, the drops fall and it rains. Soon the storm clouds drift away. Although it's still sprinkling, the sun shines again through the raindrops. It is a beautiful rainbow. Anyone seen a rainbow before? They're very beautiful. She tells me that sunlight looks white, but it really isn't. It's made up of many different colors. So do we see all the different colors in the rainbow? So sunlight is actually made of all these different colors. It's pretty cool. When I go outside, my shadow is long and skinny. The sun is setting in the western sky. It is getting cool outside. The sun is leaving for the day and the sky is getting dark. Hmm. Has anyone ever observed the sun moving through the sky? Is the sun moving? Or are we moving? Hmm, interesting. My dad tells me the sun will shine on the other side of the planet while I'm asleep. He says the earth spins round and round and makes a complete turn once every 24 hours. Did you guys know that? So we are actually moving. So even though I'm standing still, the earth is moving. So we're all moving right now. We're moving around the sun. It is night now. The sun is down. The sky is dark. And it is time to sleep. The end. All right, so that was the story Sun Up, Sun Down by Gail Gibbons. She talks a lot about the sun and many of the ways that we can use sunlight. So we know sunlight makes shadows on the ground. Sunlight helps evaporation, so it helps make those clouds in the sky to help it rain. Sun helps our crops grow, so the sun is really important to us. Now, we can also use the sun for some fun things. So today we're gonna use the sun for an engineering challenge. So my challenge for today is how can I use the sun to cook this marshmallow? Now, I mean, I could get really creative and I could fly this marshmallow up into space and up into the sun and I could cook it that way, but that's probably not realistic. So let's look at something called the engineering design process to help us. So right here, I have just, I wrote down the steps to help me remember. So I have a question for today. So I'm asking the question, how can I use the sun to cook this marshmallow? Now I'm gonna to need to imagine some solutions. So I imagine my solution to fly it up to the sun, but I don't think I have the right materials for that. So I'm gonna to have to imagine some other solutions. What solutions can you guys imagine to cook this marshmallow? What can you guys think of? Once we brainstorm some really great ideas, we can start making a plan and we can use the materials we have to help us. So let's look over here at the different materials I have today. So today I have my marshmallow, I have my plates, I have some popsicle sticks and scissors and tape. I have some tin foil, some saran wrap, some paper and some cardboard. So these are the materials that I'm using. Now, if you have other materials at home, you are welcome to use those to imagine and plan your own solution. So. Once I know what my materials are, I can refine my plan and I can, you know, decide, okay, what is my design going to look like? You know, I did that a little bit before so I could show you what I created already because it took me a little while. This is something these steps take, you know, more than a minute or two to go through. So it's okay if you take your time and make a really great plan. So I made my plan and this is what I created. So I actually had a leftover shoebox. And so I used the shoebox as my box. I had some other cardboard at my house, but I really liked my shoebox because I was able to use this lid. There are other methods too. So what I did with my plan and when I created it is I put, I don't know if you can see inside at all, there's a hockey puck so the wind was trying to take it away earlier, but I have some black paper on the bottom. Now, why would I put some black paper in the bottom of my design? Well, has anyone ever worn a black shirt on a really hot day? When you wear black outside, how does that make you feel? I know even in my purple shirt today, I'm getting pretty warm. So this black is gonna absorb
absorb the heat. So I put some black paper on the bottom to help absorb that heat and make the bottom of my solar oven really, really hot. Then I use some tin foil. So tin foil is super shiny. So what does that do to the sun? Well, it's gonna bounce the sunlight. So I have some tin foil at the top so I can aim, aim the lid so it reflects the sunlight down into my solar oven. I have extra tin foil along the sides because that was my design. I wanted to make sure I had lots of sunlight bouncing around inside. And then, you know, I supported my box with lots and lots of tape because, you know, you can never have too much tape. And then I used some popsicle sticks to help hold my lid up. When I made this this morning, the sun was a little lower, so I didn't need it as high. But, you know, now that I'm seeing my design and going back to that engineering design process, I created something, but I'm going to have to make some improvements. So right now, I don't think any sun is getting inside my box. I'm going to have to make some improvements. I'm going to have to maybe adjust the angle of my lid to make it so it can actually reflect the sun. Hmm. All right, so I fixed my design a little, made some improvements, and you know, that's part of the design process. You're gonna make something and you're gonna have to make it better. So this is my solar oven. So I'm gonna use the power of the sun. I'm gonna put my marshmallow inside. I'm gonna come back in a little while and I'm gonna see if my marshmallow was cooked or not. And you know what? If it's not, I can just go through that process again and design something new. So my challenge for you today is to go through this engineering design process. If you have a marshmallow at home, see if you can cook that. But if you don't, you could try heating up a, a cookie maybe. Or you could try putting something else inside and seeing how hot you can make it, like a rock from the ground outside. You can see if it gets nice and warm to the touch. So ask a question. What can you heat up using the power of the sun? Imagine your solutions. Brainstorm your big ideas. How are you gonna do it? Create your plan with the materials that you find around your house. Build it and then test it out. And when, you know, it probably won't work the first time and that's okay, because then you can make it better. And if it still doesn't work, ask why it's not working and start a new plan and a new design. So I encourage you all to explore solar ovens today and think about how powerful the sun can be and enjoy some time outside because it really is beautiful out. So thank you all for watching. Uh, as always, we are here every morning at 9.30 a.m. for our Early Learner Live. We have demos at 1 o'clock, and we also have plenty of resources at azscience.org. So thank you again. Have a great rest of your day.